A number of people uh, have asked me how, <laughs> if I can explain fractional reserve banking to them. Uh, and uh, I'm going to have a go here and I'm trying to keep it just to a couple of minutes because it's a pretty interesting, if crazy, system. Uh, I'm going to use it anecdotally to see if I can explain it better, uh, make it more understandable. Uh, let's just imagine I'm an old geezer. Takes a little bit of imagining, that one. Uh, I've got a hundred grand. That takes even more imagination, believe me. But I decide to go to the bank and put my life savings of a hundred grand into the bank uh, and give it to them in exchange for a modest interest rate. Uh, that's my money on deposit at the local bank. Uh, they have to keep back 10% of that uh, under banking regulation, but they can lend on the rest. So they can lend on 90,000. So a neighbour goes in and he wants to borrow £90,000 for a holiday home. Uh, £90,000 and the bank say, uh, OK, yeah, you're a good guy, we know you. They lend him the ninety grand. The vendor of the ninety grand uh, holiday home, the vendor uh, pockets the ninety grand and puts it into his bank. And that bank have to keep back 10% reserve under the banking regulations. But they can then lend on £80,000. Uh, £81,000 uh, uh, with the 10% uh, kept back. Uh, then another guy comes into the bank and he wants uh, a Range Rover. He wants to buy a Range Rover and the bank know him. They think he's a good chap. And Range Rover is 81 grand. So he buys the Range Rover and the dealer who sold the Range Rover puts the money in his bank. So that's 81 grand in the bank. Uh, and the bank have to keep back 10%. They then lend it on. This time to a couple of youngsters come in and they want to buy second-hand Beamers. Uh, good quality beamers, 30 grand or 40 grand a piece or whatever it is, and they buy those two beamers. Uh, and the dealer, same dealer, puts the, uh, the money uh, into the bank. Uh, and they have to keep back 10%. And they can the lend on the next bit. And so it goes on. This is fractional reserve banking. This is the system. Uh, so what have you got? You've got my 100 grand went in. My 100 grand has now been turned in. Uh, to a Range Rover, two second-hand Beamers and a holiday home. And Lord only knows where the rest has been lent on to, washing machines or new TVs or whatever it happens to be. And all very well as uh, it goes round. But suddenly we come to a recession. Things are looking very bad. There's a recession. People are out of work. Things are looking nasty. I've decided to go and get my £100,000 back because I want to retire to Florida. But they don't have my £100,000, do they? They've only got 10000 because they only had to keep ten back. But they've got some things on their books. Uh, they've actually got a logbook of a Range Rover, uh, the deeds of a holiday home, uh, and, the, and the logbooks for a couple of Beamers. Uh, but of course, uh, the, the problem is that these aren't worth anything anymore. Uh, so they've lent out something to the tune of £190,000, stuff which is now uh, worth probably only half that. So we have the dealer, the car dealer, who wants his money back. We want the vendor of the holiday home wants his money back, and I want my money back. And of course it isn't there. It isn't there. It's gone, because it's gone into fractional reserve banking, which is a con, which 150 years ago in America was illegal, and you could hang for it. And we do that all the time. We did that in 2007. Uh, we've learnt nothing, and of course the banks, the central banks, had to step in and bail everybody out. And the central bank said, yes, we can do this, we can help here. And the chancellor said, oh, goodness me, thank goodness for that, what do you do? Uh, because the central bank doesn't have any money, the government doesn't have any money. Uh, and this is absolutely fascinating. So, the, the, so what did the central bank come and do? They said, well, we'll print the money, we'll print the money. Uh, uh, and uh, the chancellor says, well, isn't that counterfeit? Isn't that counterfeit? Printing money, isn't that counterfeit? And the answer there comes, well, of course, no, we'll tell you what we'll do, we'll call it quantitative easing. We'll call it quantitative easing. Now, this all happened in 2007. It's happening again now. Nothing's changed, only this time it's got worse and worse and worse. And there is an almighty crisis coming down the road, believe me, when the entire banking fiat currency system collapses. You heard it from me first. Oh, happy Christmas. <laughs>